Now that we know where crude oil and natural gas come from and how they migrate upward until they're trapped, how do we find these traps where the natural resources are found? Years ago, it was based on the ancient strategy called luck. As you can see here, producers would simply drill one well right beside another. There were no scientific methods, just simple guesswork. By doing this, the landscape really suffered. Today, that good luck and guesswork have been replaced with science and technology. The same technology and principles that are used for drilling in Alaska, Texas, and oceans, and in the Middle East, are what we use right here in Ohio. Suppose a geoscientist finds a possible trap, meaning that, potentially, there is either crude oil or natural gas in that location. This presents us with some common questions. First, are there giant pools of crude oil and natural gas under the ground, or do we get it from within certain rock formations? And second, how do we extract that natural resource from the earth and create energy out of it? Once the geologist finds a possible trap that could contain crude oil and natural gas, a drilling rig is brought in. What is a drilling rig and how does it work? The drilling rig is a piece of equipment brought onto the site for five to seven days that drills a hole about the size of a soccer ball and is capable of drilling several thousand feet into the Earth's surface. Once the hole is drilled, a variety of sensitive instruments called logging tools send electronic messages that provide a detailed record of the rock and fluid properties of the geologic formations. In Ohio, a typical rotary drill rig goes about 5,000 feet down. Imagine taking 16 football fields, placing them end to end, and then turning them upright like this. That's about 5,000 feet. The rig's process is very similar to drilling through a piece of wood, only the drill bit is about the size of that soccer ball we mentioned earlier. Here we are standing in an Ohio oil field with many scientists like petroleum engineers. The drilling is performed by highly trained members of a drilling crew. Once the rig has drilled through various rock formations, steel piping is placed in the ground. Then a cement shield is placed around the pipe to protect any water tables or aquifers. The pipe is then perforated and fractured only at the crude oil and natural gas rock formation to allow the flow of these vapors and liquids to move up the well to the surface. If the rock formation contains enough crude oil and or natural gas, the rotary drill rig will be replaced with a pumping unit. Now the purpose of the pump is to keep the crude oil and natural gas flowing. Crude oil is sent into storage tanks and natural gas is sent into natural gas pipelines. Oftentimes today, we need to drill in areas that won't allow us to drill straight down vertically. But with some of the latest technologies, we are now able to drill directionally. This is an excellent way, for example, to drill under a park or maybe a school's property. Many pre-developed areas tend to be excellent locations for crude oil or natural gas, so the directional drilling technology is a great way to retrieve the source. So what does this all cost, you may ask? Here in Ohio, it typically costs anywhere from $350,000 on up to a million dollars. An offshore well can cost more than a billion, that's B as in billion dollars per well. And it's still no guarantee it will even produce. Today, there are over 64,000 crude oil and natural gas wells currently producing in 49 of Ohio's 88 counties with more than 273,000 wells drilled. Do all Ohio counties produce crude oil and natural gas? No. The potential geological formations that contain crude oil and natural gas simply do not exist throughout the entire state, which is why technology plays such a key role in retrieving this valuable resource. Now back to a question asked at the beginning. Once we have drilled to our targeted rock formations, how do we get the crude oil and natural gas out? Utilizing scientific principles of movement, the fluids, crude oil, and vapors, natural gas, are lifted out of the ground to the surface using a variety of different pumping units. How do these units work? Well, first of all, keep in mind that if a pump jack is not moving, it doesn't mean the well is not producing. The pumping unit is turned on just long enough to help create a siphoning effect. Petroleum engineers, production supervisors, or well tenders will typically determine how often each individual well should be turned off and on. Also, keep in mind that the motors on these pumping units also need energy to work. This energy is either the well's own natural gas source, electricity, or solar panels. If electric is used, 
The pumping units may be turned on overnight during off-peak electric times. Where does it go when you have it out of the ground? The first place it will go will be into a separator. The separator separates the crude oil liquids from the natural gas vapors. The crude oil will then move on to a storage unit called a tank battery. and The natural gas will be transported through a variety of natural gas pipelines for distribution. Why can't you always see these crude oil and natural gas wells? New technology allows us to have a very small environmental footprint. These wells are hidden by plants and other landscaping like these wells in Ohio. Wells can be found in the parking lots or backyards of schools, churches, cemeteries, parks, cornfields, or even your own backyard. And these wells can produce energy for decades. There you have it. A brief explanation of drilling and production for crude oil and natural gas. With continued research and development, we will continue to provide the safest, cleanest, and most efficient natural energy all across Ohio. For more information, follow the roadmap to video series number five, highlighting crude oil and natural gas refining.